extra $600 per week unemployment benefit that has helped people make ends meet during the pandemic is set to expire at the end of this month. That's if Congress doesn't extend it soon. And so far, GOP leaders don't appear to be in any rush to renew it. So joining us now, the Color of Money finance columnist for The Washington Post, Michelle Singletary. Michelle, it is good to see you this morning. Happy 4th, by the way. Oh, happy 4th to you as well. Always good to be here. Thank you. We love having you. So I want to um, read to you what Senator Bill Cassidy, Republican of Louisiana, said regarding the potential stimulus. He said, if it turns out the economy is recovering, that's a good thing, and direct stimulus checks may not be necessary. Do you get the sense that the economy is recovering and that these checks will not be needed? Uh, no, I do not get the sense that the economy is recovering. I mean, we see now with the cases increasing, businesses have to close down again. And also, people are panicked, so they're staying home because they don't want to be out there and catch it. So this idea that this aid is still not needed, that we're, you know, all uh, happy now, is just not true. It's a false narrative, and it's going to help uh, hurt a lot of people in this country. Let me ask you this. You know, one big, <clears throat> excuse me, battle between Democrats and Republicans is over the reason unemployment has remained high. And GOP lawmakers argue that, you know, the enhanced jobless benefits were just, they were too generous. And that for many laid off workers and low income Americans, uh, it only made things worse in the sense of that it, it keeps them home and keeps them away from, from actually going to work. Do you buy that theory? No. And I was thinking of the right word to say that wouldn't um, get me in trouble with my pastor. So I'm just going to say that that's idiotic. And and I it, it just enrages me, if I can say. I know we're supposed to be all happy because it's the fourth. But the idea that people would not go to work because of this short, temporary boost in their income is ridiculous. And it shows that they have never actually talked to real unemployed folks. I have. I work with people through it. My church, I know what it's like for them to talk about what it means to be unemployed. And the idea that people be like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to sit home and collect this money and not work is ridiculous. And they're listening to business owners who are afraid that may happen. Now, maybe people don't want to return to work because they are scared of catching the virus. The more you go to work, the more you're exposed to people who may be asymptomatic, who's bringing it in. We've got people who are not wearing masks. Perhaps that's that's why they're not returning to work. And we are not through this crisis yet. And for them to say that people are not, it's going to be a disincentive to work. And they use uh, the, the reasoning that they're going to be making more than when they made before the pandemic. Well, wh why don't we look at the minimum wage for the federal government? And that's why they're making more. So, th so again, false narrative. Oh, they're making more. Well, they weren't making a whole lot before. And so maybe we need to increase the federal minimum wage or pay people a living wage. So then they will be happy to go back, even if it is going to maybe risk themselves. And I just want to point out, you wrote an article for the Washington Post and really brought us into the lives of these families who are economically um, fragile right now. And, and I highly recommend reading that to get a better feel for what it does to, to people in that specific situation. But it, there was also um, this recent report from the U.S. Government Accountability Office that found the IRS made $1.4 billion in stimulus payments to dead people. And that from April 10th to May 17th, some stimulus payment calculations didn't include the additional money, that $500 for children that they're supposed to get, even though the required information had been submitted correctly. Now, we know IRS uh, Commissioner Charles Reddick uh, says that he, he asserts these families are going to see this money by the end of the month. How, how plausible do you think that is? And, and what is happening that this can't be fixed and, and doled out correctly? Well, two things are happening. Uh, and I give credit to the IRS employees who have been working through this pandemic to get out an amazing amount of money to people. But there were a lot of glitches, which we've been covering in the Washington Post um, uh, very, uh, I think, over this whole time. And so there were glitches because they were tr quickly trying to send out money. So there are really two groups of people, those who were able to use the non-filer tool, uh, tool, uh, non tool to get in their information, to get that $500. And there were many people who couldn't use it, didn't know how to use it, didn't even know it existed. And so the IRS is saying, and Treasury, really, because it's coming from them, 
and which is means it's coming from the administration that you know what forget you guys you can't use it too bad you're going to have to wait till next year to get your money and that's just tragic there you know I talked to a grandfather in Philadelphia who's raising his two grandchildren who just couldn't use the tool he doesn't have the capacity doesn't have a computer and so they're saying to this grandfather too bad just wait till next year during the the, the most uh crazy uh, economic issues that we're having right now. And so I hope that they reverse that decision, that they get money to the neediest parts of our population right now. Um, and, you know, they're trying their best, but they got to do better. Michelle Singletary, I got one laugh out of you. Hmm. I mean, we usually, <laughs> we usually get several, and you are always a joy. Thank you so much. Re really important conversation to have. Glad we had it with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, me too. Me too. I hope everybody just realizes that we're all in this together. Yeah. And I yeah. hope that the administration looks at the people who need this money and not make a political play to their base to not help the neediest Americans, especially on the 4th of July. Yeah, and again, her article in the Washington Post uh, really highlights some of what these people uh, are living right oh. now in this pandemic. So thanks again. You're welcome. Well, can you, <clears throat> can you believe it? They are celebrating the 4th of July in Great Britain. Uh, but it's not for the reasons that we celebrate for over here. It's because